Mulk. Allah, he said, described himself that he is Malik al-Mulk. Liman al-Mulk al-Yawm, Lillahi al-Wahid al-Qahar. Allah will say, before day of resurrection, when everyone completely, there is no more creation, Allah say to himself, by himself, to whom is the kingdom today? Where are those who were saying, they have kingdoms, they have palaces, they are king. Where are they? Let them stand up. No one answer. And he answered to himself by himself, saying, Lillahi al-Wahid al-Qahar. Kingdom today is for the one that has the power on everything. Under him, under his command, everything is created or everything disappears. Zulfikar, where is your friend, the, the um, this American family? Where are they? The doctor, the, no, 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 yeah, yeah, can sit here. Where is his wife? Please, on the couch. It was waiting for you, but... <laughs> <laughs> it is feeling lonely. No, it is okay. Yes. Then he has to play with the volume. Allah says, to whom is the kingdom today? Do you have a kingdom? Huh? No? You have a kingdom? No? Uh -huh. He has kingdom, playing with it. <laughs> you have kingdom? You have kingdom? Family. Huh? Anyone has a kingdom? All of us has kingdom. All of us, we have kingdom that Allah trusted us with, trusted us with it, and we failed. The kingdom, because everyone thinks he is a king, or himself, or herself. He is the one that cannot be conquered. He is the one that knows everything. He is the one that knows A to Z. Huh? You know children, when they grow up, become two years, they begin to teach them A, A, B, C, D, so in order to show, to teach them, they put for them A, apple, B, boy, for example, C, carrot, or cat. We are raising our kingdom the way that we like, and that's where is the mistake. It's not we are raising our kingdom as Allah has like. We are not raising our kingdom that we think we can, we are owning it and we can control it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
and in the way of his messengers. We are building it up the way that we think our mind is the best mind and we know everything and no one can argue with us. Parents cannot argue with their children anymore. They cannot speak with their children. Children, they run away. They go move. They say, oh, we don't need you. Okay, you don't need me. Why are you asking for my help? We don't need you. That's what we are saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't need you. We have our power. We have our obligations that we know from our ego. And we like to live the way we like. We don't want to live the way that you like for us. So what Allah does? Completely dissolve everyone from creation. Don't say it's difficult. Can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one day say to this world not to exist, it will exist or it will dis distinguish? Completely. Example, uh, what is the example? Dinosaurs. Can you find dinosaurs anymore? What happened to them? They extinguished. They're gone. Why are they gone? They were able to live forever. Why they, if, if there is a probability that they lived for a long time and there was the probability says that they are going to disappear and they disappeared. Do you think that there is no probability for us one day to disappear? There is a probability that one day human beings will disappear from this earth by Allah's order. And that's why we have to be very careful on how we raise ourselves in our kingdoms. Your kingdom ends. What ends is not, what ends means has no value. What does not end has value. What ends has no value. It become rotten, you throw it. You have, you have vegetables, fresh vegetables, you bring them from the market, you like them, you eat them. After two, three days, what happened? They are rotten, what you do with them? You throw them, why you throw them? Eat them. No, you throw them. Also, if we are not going to listen to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, means we are becoming rotten from inside. And we don't know that. We are so arrogant, so proud of ourselves, that we cannot accept that we are slowly, slowly struggling, and we are becoming more and more into a difficult situation by listening too much to our worldly desires that never ends, and making us to become slowly, slowly, I don't like to say it, but all of us, we are in this problem, rotten. That's why we go to a mosque, or we go to a church, we go to synagogue, or we go to any place, in order to rejuvenate ourselves, in order to bring back our life back to normal, not to be lost in this wilderness. We are, we are, we lost it, we lost ourselves these days by not following the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why he sent messengers? Huh? Why he sent Noah? Why he sent 
Abraham, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Why he sent Musa alayhi salam, Moses? Why he sent Jesus? Why he sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam? For what reason? Jews, they say, oh, we have Moses. Okay, that's great. Christian, they say, we have Jesus. That's very nice. Muslim, they say, we have Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. That's good. But what are, do, what are you listening to what they are saying? Or are you are not? This is the question. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord, send these messengers to show us the way. Are we following the way of Allah or not? If we are following, we will succeed. If we are not following, we will lose. That's why everyone think a little bit about himself. Today what I'm going to take with me back home. What I'm going to say to myself after this meeting. That there is a struggle within good and evil in ourselves. One time the good goodness appears, one time evenness appear. We are not trying to balance between them. From first day, day one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered two brothers, Abel and Cain, Habil wa Qabil. Keep it for him. There, he's going to be all the time crying now. <laughs> Example is Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam, the father of all creation, and Eve, the mother of all creation. They have two sons, first two sons. Allah asked them to give a donation, a sacrifice to him, to be generous, to give something from what Allah has given them, to be, to show that gratitude, huh? gratitude to their Lord. This also uh, comes on us. Are we showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of what he has given us or not? Only we are showing gratitude to our own, own satisfaction and desires. Allah didn't give you to put and pocket. Allah gave you, gave you to spend in his way. So he, he asked them, both of them, I need a sacrifice from you. I need you to be generous and give me a donation. Allah needs donation. Sheikh Sulaiman. Allah doesn't need donations. Allah is giving donations. Allah giving generously to everyone. Muslim and non-Muslim. There is no difference to him. His name is Ar-Rahman, the merciful one. Ar-Rahim, the one who is the compassion, the one that he, his generosity is manifested on his servants. Allah doesn't need donation, but he asked to see, are you, are you feeling, are you thanking him or not? Are we giving donation? So he checked. He said to Abel and Cain, Habil wa Kabil. I need a donation from you. They look, they never heard like that before. Where we are going to give donation? You don't need it, you have a lot. No, Allah needs it. Why he needs it? Allah doesn't need your donation, but needs to check on you, to make you to know that you are generous or not. You love him or not. You respect him or not. You call upon him or not. 
you invite him every day in your heart or not. He said to us, neither my heavens nor my earth contained me. I told you he's going to keep running. Uh, but the heart of the believer contained me. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. He's happy. He's in Allah's presence now. He's happy. He's keep for two hours now like that. Yesterday he was locked. Today he's open. So Allah wants you to know, to check yourself. He doesn't need your donation. He wants to reward you for your donation, if you give donation. He needs, he needs you to know how much you have, your hands are open. Are you feeling gratitude to him? Are you thanking him by giving? Or are you closing your hand, leaking it from the top, from the bottom, not letting one penny to come out from your hand? You see, when they want to give, their hands become... Their hands become what? Shaking. They cannot give. You know the Psalms of Sayyidina Dawood, Zabur? They used to blow in the trumpet. She's blowing now. Yeah. When Allah want to, this, to finish this earth, He ordered one angel called Israfil, to blow in the trumpet. That he's blowing on himself now. So he said to the children of Adam, which they represent the whole human race, Abel and Cain, Habil wa Kabil, I need a donation. You like to give me or you don't? Of course. Of course. One of them, Habib, went and looked into his flock. He has a huge flock. He went through the old flock and he was checking them one by one, one by one, one by one. Every sheep or goat that Allah gave to him it's mentioned in Holy Quran and even in the Bible. He, he chose the best ramp that he has. He was looking, you know, when you want to check if the sheep is big or not, you check his backbones here. If it is full of muscles and meat, that means a very strong sheep full of meat. He was looking, 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 looking. And he picked the best that he has. He said, this is the best I have, I give. Not the worst I have, I give. Sayyidina Abu Bakr and As-Siddiq. And Sayyidina Umar. Sayyidina Osman and Sayyidina Ali. When Prophet wasallam asked them for a donation, what they gave. Prophet asked, I need a donation for the people. They are poor. I need donation for preparing ourselves for anything. And they brought in front of Prophet wasallam, peace be upon him, whatever they can. And he looked at Sayyidina Abu Bakr and he said, Ya Abu Bakr, what you left for your family, what you brought to me? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I brought, O oh Messenger of, of God, I brought everything that I own. Anything I have, I brought to you. He said, what you left for your family? He said, I left Allah, God, and you. That's it. I don't have one extra penny at home. I brought everything, and he was very rich, Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. He was very, very rich. 
Don't think Sahaba were poor sitting in the corners having uh, ripped, ripped, huh? ripped clothes, not torn clothes, not working, lazy. Uh, too many people today sitting in the corner, especially youth, that they can work. They don't want to work. They say, oh, Islam or Sufism teach us to sit in the corner. No, that's not true. Sahaba, they were merchants. They were going and coming, making money, helping Prophet ﷺ. Prophet needs money? No. He needs to check, to make you sure to check how much you are generous. The one who wrapped on his stomach a stone for three days from hunger is not in need for his, the money of his people. When the mountain of Uhud, in the battle of Uhud, came to him and said, Ya Rasulullah, we are, I am ready. The mountain spoke and everyone was hearing, Sahaba. I'm ready to be turning myself into gold for you. So we don't need you. We don't need your gold. We don't need your treasures. Why he needed the treasures of Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Siddiq and Sayyidina Amr and He is telling them how much they are generous. He's teaching them. Religion is to teach. Religion is not to scare you. There are many people in mosques go and speak, scholars, they scare you. No, it's not to scare people. It's not to threaten people. It's not to punish. Allah did not create you to punish you. Allah created you to teach you how much he is merciful and how much you have to be gratitude, grateful, grateful to him. That's what he wants from you. He wants to show you his mercy. But how he show his, his mercy if he's not sh asking you to do something to, to learn about his mercy? So he said to Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Ya Abu Bakr, what you left for? Your family? He didn't say I left for them this and this and this and this. No. He said I left you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them. Allahu Akbar. How much they have faith in Allah and his Prophet. Because Prophet sallallahu alayhi said a famous hadith, ma naqasa malun min sadaqah. Never money get less from a donation. Means if you have, you have, a, you have a money and you give a donation from it, don't think that it's your money is going to drop. Allah will give more. Grand Sheikh, may Allah bless his soul. Grand Sheikh, Sheikh Abdullah Al-Faiz Dastani, always used, when we were very young, used to tell us, don't worry about rizq. Lean on Allah and his prophet, rizq will come. Be generous, open your hands, Allah will give. He said that, Awliya Allah, they can see. They can see on every person's head. There is a chain hanging from heavens, coming down all the way, all the way, and uh, what you say, connected with everyone on his head. It reach, it touch his head. That is the chain of rizq. That is the pipe of rizq that comes from heavens. Always your rizq comes through that pipe. In, in your... Allah give you ways in your minds how to get rizq. That's why uh, there are a group of people when they meditate, they make their meditations when they are in these special uh, uh, room, circular rooms, especially people who are uh, observing Buddhism or different uh, religions or beliefs, 
they have this Allah gave them to understand that this light they have in that circular room it is all closed I don't know if you some people saw that but it's like a bell it's made like a bell circular and then like a cone comes on the top it's like a bell and they leave one opening from the top in the middle that lights come in very sharp when the sun comes very sharp beam of light coming inside and they sit in the middle meditating that light come on the middle of their heads because there where it's coming first that heavenly manifestations come on the on the head because it has the mind because the mind makes you problems because from you way the way you think and you the way that you don't the mind which is the one that does not balance anything not the heart heart can balance everything heart allah said neither my heavens nor my earth contained me but the heart of believer contained me he didn't say the mind means the mind is limited the mind that makes you to have face problems so they have to make sure that the light come on the middle of their head and in order to and they sit for six months one year by themselves in these caves that they are being built like a bell and they become very spiritual if that happens in in beliefs what do you think about religions what do you think about those who are following the messenger Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, who taught us to believe in Moses and Jesus that we are not Muslim if we don't believe in Bo Moses and Jesus he wrapped the whole religion together three religions together so that the problem always comes from our mind so when Allah ordered Abel and Cain Habil and Kabil to give they begin to think it, rationalize, rationalizing it through their minds, not through their hearts. Heart is something for something else. I give, I don't give. Sometimes when you, when first inspiration comes to your heart, follow that inspiration. That is the best inspiration. When you are deciding on doing something, the first what comes to your heart is the best inspiration. Don't look for the second. The second means begin to struggle, and the mind is struggling. I do the first, or I come with another alternative. Then it drops. Sometimes people are so enthusiastic when they hear something in order to be part of it or to, to throw themselves in it. That is a good inspiration coming. As soon as they begin to rationalize it with their minds, they say, no, wait. They drop down. They begin to struggle. This is a psychological problem that we face, all of us. Prophet came to teach Sahaba that, oh, you, have to, you are facing this problem, clean yourself. He said to Sayyidina Abu Bakr, what you left for, for your family? He said, nothing. I left you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gave everything. You think he lost? Or he got more later, as Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, donation, will manaka samalu man sadaka never money is less from donation he said dawu mardakum bis sadaka another another hadith tradition he said cure your patient with donations that's why people get, make oath and say ya rabbi if you cure my husband or my wife or my children or this or that i give so much i they do something that is a that is a way for purifying yourself and curing you, yourself and your patients. He looked at Sayyidina Umar, come back to the story, he looked at Sayyidina Umar, he said, Ya Umar, what you left for your family? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I gave you half, I, I made the moderate way. I gave you half and I took half. Which is good, isn't it? What Sayyidina, what Prophet Sallallahu said to Sayyidina Umar? Ya Omar, your, your, can you move forward, please? He 
He said, Ya Amr. Sayyidina Amr was happy he's going to hear something. He's Khalifa to Rasulullah. He's one of the fourth caliphate. He said, O oh, Amr, your faith is half of the faith of Abu Bakr. And what Prophet Sallallahu said, if there was a prophet after me, Umar would be prophet. But he said to him, your faith is half of the faith of Abu Bakr. He left half. Today you ask people what you are giving for Allah's way? Five dollars. Ten dollars. Huh? Five dollars, keep it to yourself. Ten dollars, keep it to yourself. Hundred dollars, keep it to yourself. Allah knows. Might be, might be, he gives one dollar to Allah is better from someone who give one million dollars. Because that one doesn't have the one dollar, the other one has hundreds of millions of dollars. So the one who gave one dollar is better. Allah knows the heart. So, Habil, Abel, went and checked the best that he has. And he went and he gave it, put it on, on what you call it? Huh? Altar. 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 He put it on the altar. That's how was the, before, before the Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all Prophets came before this, how the way they used to do. They put anything they want to give on an altar. And at that moment, fire comes, take and go. SubhanAllah. This is a sign that God is accepting. When that fire comes, takes and go, disappear. So he put it on an altar and he's waiting. His brother came, came, who is older than him, and was looking and looking and looking between his flock what to give. This one, hey, Allah doesn't need, why I have to give? Allah doesn't need a, a ramp. Let me check, younger than ramp. The other one didn't say Allah doesn't need. He said, Allah is checking me. I am generous or not. The f first one. The second one, Cain said, no, no, Allah doesn't need. Okay, this is your belief. Keep it to yourself. In the day of judgment, Allah is throwing you to your face. He's not punishing you. You still gave. But he's not punishing you. But you will be ashamed to see his mercy on you and what he is giving you, and what you, how you are running away from him. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So, he went and checked the the worst one, the most sick one, they cannot walk anymore. He took it and put it on the altar near the, his brother. And then fire came, took the one of the big ramp and le left the one sick one. Means Allah saying to him, I don't want your donation. It's throw in your face your donation. I am not in need for your donation. I'm checking to send my mercy on you, to bless you or not, to manifest my beautiful names on you or not. So Allah sent his mercy on whom? At A Abel, Habil. So he was calm, happy, peaceful, tranquil. Allah did not send his mercy on the other one. So what he was? Angry, pride, proud, arrogant, malice, jealous, all these bad characteristics, 
was dressed on him, coming from devil, from Satan on him. One is being blessed with Allah's manifestation. One is being uh, dressed with satanic bad characteristics. So that is the big difference is when you are blessed, your bad characteristics will disappear. When you are not blessed because of what you are doing, you will increase the amount of your bad characteristic within yourself. Allah wants to show you this lesson to make, to make you to, to obey Him. Because obedience leads to good characteristics, good behaviors. So what happened? He became angry. When someone became angry, as we said yesterday, he cannot realize the good from the bad. So what he want? He came to his brother and said, I want to kill you. What he did his brother? Nothing. He said, If you are going to extend your hand to kill me, I'm not extending my hands back to kill you. I'm surrendering to my Lord. That's why when Sayyidina Isa, Jesus came, say if anyone slap you on your right cheek, turn your left, surrender. The surrender to your Lord. In Sufism, the, the, the cream of Islam, of Islamic Sharia, if someone beats you on your right cheek, keep still. Don't turn. Even if you turn, that's showing that you have some kind of egoism. I'm not turning my face, hit me on the second. I'm going, no, keep still. You're submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is a very rare high level. Not everyone can go there. But when you are not showing generosity to your Lord, Allah is showing you your bad characteristics, is coming out from you how much you are stingy and greedy. You want everything to you to yourself and you are stingy from giving anything to others. That's why Prophet وسلم, used he said in one of the hadith of Prophet وسلم, from Bukhari and Muslim, he said that Prophet never said to anyone, if he asked him anything, he said to him, I don't have or no. Never used on his tongue no for someone asking something. Today how much we say no? Might be to everything children to say to their parents no for sure. That's no always. Might be some children are not like that, but there are most of the people. And we, as we were children, we used to say to our parents, no. So we must not say no. I tell you a story, it happened to me, with me. I was studying in the American University of Beirut, and I have exams. But on that day, we decided to go visit Grand Sheikh, Sheikh Abdullah Faiz Dawstani in Damascus. We are in Lebanon, he is in Syria, driving over borders and to go visit him. Like someone living in Canada, driving and going. It's like two, three hours drive. But we were two days before there and came back and then we want to go back another time. So my mother got angry. She said, no, you don't go. I said, no, we need to go. Don't go, go, don't go, go, as happens between children and parents. We went. We left and the house and me and my brother. I like in the, I was in the very, very early 20s, 21, 22. We went. Driving all the way, it was snowing these days. When it's snow, you cannot reach for 10 hours because you have to go all the mountains like what you have here, mountains, uh, in the uh, in the west coast, all these ro ro rocky mountains, very high mountains, might be, some of these mountains is 3,000 
meters about sea level means it's 10,000 feet. So we have to go all this and... We reach there, happy, coming to Grand Sheikh's to knock at his door, he opened the door. He was waiting behind the door. He didn't let us to knock even. He was waiting, opened the door. He said, go back from where you came. Don't come to me with anger. Make up with your mother and then come. Oh. How he knew. It happened before, in the, in the, during the day, and we were going and arriving to him during us. And he has no telephone, he has nothing there. It's on the mountain. He said, go back. Don't make your mother angry. Make up with her, and then if she gives permission, you come. He didn't let us in, went back. Anger is the problem for every sin. So what happened to Cain? He got angry. Cannot listen, finish. You are angry, you are angry. So I'm going to kill you. Okay. You kill me, I'm not going to say anything. I'll go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what I'm going to do here. Look at the faith. He knows his life with Allah is better. So okay, you, I have an instrument that sent me back quickly. Today we struggle. If someone wants to kill you, of course you struggle. You call the police, you do anything. You put alarm system now. Not only for your safety, you put alarm system if someone come and take one dollar from your home even. We have a mosque in England, London, huge mosque. And we have on the mosque, like it's 150,000 square feet. We have so the priories. We have all these sadaka boxes there on the. And one day they came, those who are managing the place came to Maulana Sheikh Nazim. May Allah give him long life. Amen. They said, Oh, Maulana, they, someone came and rub these uh, boxes. He opened them with knife or screwdriver, or whatever, took the money. He said, Alhamdulillah, that's nice. Allah sent his people to collect the money. You putting it for donation, Allah took it as donation. So from now on, don't lock this box. Leave it open. People put, anyone in need, come take. What's the big problem? Look. If this happened in another mosque, what they do? Oh, they call everyone, the board is meeting, uh, uh, the, the uh, doorkeeper is coming, they begin to uh, ask every pr a person who is praying there, oh, did you see anything? For what? This in al masajid al-illah. Allah said in Holy Quran, must ask for Allah, it's the house of Allah. So give, keep it open, no alarm system. Let anyone take what he wants. Don't dicta dictate what you want. People today, they think, oh, if we, they use their minds. Oh, we lose money if we let it open. Allah said, Prophet said, Manaka samalu min sadaka, never money get less from donation. Let people, if someone is not in need, he will not enter the mosque and take money, or the church and take money. Leave it, Allah will send more. But our minds are so small that we cannot think more openly. So, purification of the soul, Prophet ﷺ came with it and said, this is, Islam is the five pillars are the structure, the main structure that you have the ceilings, you have the basement, you have the walls, but to decorate it is the good manners. You decorate your building. You want to decorate your heart, you could decorate it with the good manners. So don't get, if you get angry, then we are ending up like struggling. And this is, this is what happened today between all of us. We are struggling between good and evil. We don't know. We are, one time we are on the side of good, one time on the side of evil.
All of us, not someone who is speaking or someone who is... No, no, all of us, we are falling into this problem. Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad wasallam, he came to say that evil is there. Avoid yourself from falling into it. He said avoid. He knows that we cannot, sometimes we are weak servant, we have to, we will fall in it. But what Allah said, immediately repent. Oh my servant. In Holy Quran, Kul ya ibadiya alladhina asrafu ala anfusihim la taqnatu min rahmatillah. Oh Muhammad, say to my servants in Holy Quran, those who are oppressors to themselves, who oppress themselves by committing sins, don't lose hope of Allah forgiveness. Repent. In Allah Allah will forgive all sins. All our sins will be forgiven if we repent. Are we committing sins or not? So what we need to do? Come to say in the evening, Ya Rabbi, forgive us. Amen. We repent to you, we say, Astaghfirullah, forgive us. Amen. Allah will forgive us. I will say that story and I will end. One day Prophet, peace be upon him, Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi afdalu salatu was salam, said to Sahaba, that this one is going to go to paradise. That this companion of mine, this particular one, is going to go to paradise. No account. And when Prophet says something like that, means something finished. It's like that. So Sahaba wants to know now, the other companions want to know why. What is what is in him special that is going to go to paradise without any account? So Sayyidina Umar followed him to his house. One of the Sahabi, Sayyidina Umar, radiallahu ta'ala anhu arda, he followed that one, that Prophet mentioned that he's going to enter paradise, he followed him to his house. From the tradition of Arabs, and Sahaba in that time, that anyone comes to your door, knock your door, and comes in, you host him three days without asking him any question. Your, op your door is open for him. Don't ask one question. You give him food, you give him shelter, you give him money, you give him whatever you have, generous, is, is your generosity. This was very famous. And still it's very famous in some, within some people, but not everyone, because today everyone, we are spoiled. We don't have that anymore, that uh, open heart generosity. So he came to his house, entered and sitting. He didn't ask him anything. He came immediately, offered him food, put the food. He didn't need to offer, he put the food. Said, yeah, Omar, let us eat. He ate and he saw, Amr said, no, Amr didn't go out, so he put for him the bed, it was night, to sleep. So usually in our tradition, Islamic tradition, what we do before Fajr prayer, wake up like half an hour or one hour before and pray, meditate and pray tahajjud and whatever you have prayer to do, you do. So Sayyidina Amr wake up, took ablution, was praying, and he saw that companion was sleepy, <laughs> happy, <laughs> not bothering himself to wake up. <laughs> it's nice to sleep, huh? Especially when you are tired. When Azan came, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, that's a happy quickly, wake up, took ablution, Turn to, to masjid to pray be, behind Prophet Sallallahu with Sayyidina Amr. Sayyidina Amr looked, what he did? He didn't do anything extra, what is going on? <laughs> they prayed with Prophet, they sat with Prophet, after Fajr they came back home. That's a hobby. <laughs> Slept another time for two hours, then go to work. 
Ah, I said, no, I want to work. Zuhur came, they prayed in, with behind Prophet. Asr came, prayed behind Prophet, and then go to work. Maghrib came, they prayed behind Prophet, go to work. Aisha came, prayed behind Prophet, they came home. And he was checking on him. Another time he's sleeping. <laughs> Say, now Amar all the night open wants to see what he's doing. Nothing. <laughs> sleeping. In the morning, Allah Akbar Allah run to the masjid. Three days. After third days, that companion of Prophet asked Said Naamar. He said, Ya Amar, can I help you now? <laughs> Any I know your house is near. Bye. What, what is going on here? Can I help you? He said, yeah, of course. That's why I came. I cannot take it anymore. said, no, Omar is tough. That's why you see anyone whose name Omar is tough. Anyone his name Omar here? Yes, my, my grandson. Also you, him also Omar. You are Omar, isn't it? You are tough. So he asked him, Prophet وسلم, said, you are going to go to paradise. And you are not doing something extra. We are doing more than you. The other companions are doing more than you. What's going on? How? He said, yeah, Amar. What Prophet says, it's an honor. What Prophet وسلم, say, I, I don't find a meaning except to say, thank you, Ya Rabbi. I am thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I don't know why he said. And Sayyidina Amr said, وَمَا يَمْتِكُ عَنِ الْهَوَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى Allah said in Holy Quran that Prophet never open his mouth if it is not revelation. Means it is revelation. You are doing something that we are not doing. You tell me. <coughs> he said, I don't know. I pray Fajr, I pray Zuhr, I pray Asr, I pray Maghrib, I pray Isha. Sayyidina Amr said, okay, I make the hajjud, I pray fajr, I stay till ishraq, I pray duha, I pray zuhur, I do zikr, I go to asr, pray for rak'at zuhur, sunnah, after and asr, read Quran, read every hadith of Prophet, remind myself of many things that Prophet said during the day, praying maghrib, praying isha, making zikr, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh, I do a lot. I don't know. Let's go and ask Prophet. He said, no, no, we don't want. I'm asking you. He said, oh, I remember now. <laughs> I have three things that I do before I sleep. He said, what? He said that, that I have three things that I do them through the 24 hours. Before I sleep, I raise my hand and say, Ya Rabbi, I forgive everyone that harmed me. I have no ill feelings for anyone that in the day of judgment, I will ask you that I want my right from this person. He deceived me or he cheated me or he spread rumors on me or lied on me. I forgive them. I don't need anything. I need Allah's mercy. That's it. Whoever spoke about me bad, I forgive him in the day of judgment. I don't want anything back. Because in the day of judgment, Allah will ask everyone, is your brother oppressed you? If yes, give him from your amal, good amal, take from his bad amal on the other side. You know, I don't want. I forgive him. And I ask Rabbi, to for my Lord, to forgive me. And if I hurt anyone, may Allah forgive me. And I sleep. In the morning, when I wake up, I say, Ya Rabbi, this is a new day. I'm bringing shahada. And repeat after me. He says, Ashhadu, Ashhadu, and La ilaha illallah. Wa Ashhadu, Anna Muhammadan, Abduhu, Wa Rasulu. I say it three times. Saying, Ya Rabbi, there is no creator except you, and Muhammad وسلم, is your messenger. 
Then, evening time, when the day is finished, because the day finished by when the sun going to sunset. That's where they begin the new day, in all tradition, and many other. Uh, the, the, the day begin at Maghrib, at the sunset, not at midnight. That midnight is, is something else. But they consider at sunset is the day begin. At that moment, when the day is beginning at sunset, not in the morning, but the sunset, when the sun is going down, if during the day I got the whole wealth of dunya in my right hand, I will not be so much happy, interested that, oh, I have everything in my hand, I am rich, I am this, I am that. I'm as I am. And in the evening, if I lose everything, I'm happy, I'm not interested in anything. I gained in the morning, I lost in the evening, are equal. <coughs> I have these three characteristics. Sayyidina Umar said, now I understood what is the difference. This is a big lesson here. I don't know if there is time to, to explain it. But means it's not only people sitting in their corners and and only zikr, 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 remember. No, is what you have of goodness within you. There are some people, they say, oh, we are the best. Why we are the best? We are Sufis. Okay, we are so alhamdulillah. You purifying yourself is okay, but not to be sitting and wasting your time. Islam is asking you to purify your behaviors, your heart, yourself, to have good manners. That Sahabi had that. He was forgiving everyone. And he doesn't care. You look both see and people today, if they buy a new car, oh, how much they celebrate for a, a new car. Huh? If they have a birthday for their son or daughter, oh, they bring magicians, they bring people to celebrate, they decorate the whole house. And when someone comes to ask them for a charity, for a donation for the mosque, they shake their hands. Is that? It's happening or not? <laughs> so that, that good manners that that Sahabi has, that Prophet said, this one is going to paradise. Because he has these good characteristics. If we try to learn lesson today, is we are in a struggle between evil and good. Let us follow more goodness than follow more evilness. We know there is evilness in dunya, in this world. We know that we are trapped in it, but slowly, slowly, when you have a, a trap, a, a chain around you, take one after one from these uh, circular chains, take one after one until it's finished. Don't think Allah will not help you. Allah will help everyone that knocking his door. And his door is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah forgive us. May Allah bless you. May Allah bless everyone. Hurmat al-Habibi, Hurmat al-Fatih. This advice is first to me because I am also in this problem first to me, then to you if you like to take it. It's not for a certain person or particularly for one person. It's for all of us. It's for everyone. This is uh, a, an advice that all our masters, teachers keep advising their students and they're advising us to keep it in our mind and in our hearts because it's very important, very necessary for everyone in order to live happily in this life and happily in the yeah. other life. May Allah forgive us. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah.